So welcome to uh, our next webcast uh, on update statistics. And uh, this is going to be a, a fun uh, afternoon. I've got a lot of slides to go over. I've got a lot of examples uh, to go over. And we're going to take a deep dive into update statistics. I'm going to just dive right in. When I go full screen, I can't see the chat. Uh, so bear with me. If you have a question, though, put it in the chat. The webcast is being recorded, and hopefully we'll have the slides and a replay available in a couple of days. Uh, but in the meantime, please mute your line uh, so there's no background noise uh, that will distract anyone. And there is a chat button. Uh, the button keeps changing uh, with releases of WebEx. Uh, but find the chat button. If you have a question, put it in the chat. I will uh, get to it uh, later on in the webcast. And uh, at the end, we'll try and save some time for questions. So I'm going to talk about update stats. And I want to talk about what, why it's important, what does update stats do, and then we'll talk about data distributions and recommendations for running update stats. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about improving the performance of running update stats. Uh, how do you monitor update stats? I'll spend a bit of time on that. Uh, we'll talk about ARC Kegel's do stats, and we'll talk about the built-in uh, automated update stats in Informix uh, 11, 12, and 14. And so with that, I'm just going to dive right in. So why are update stats important? Uh, Stats give you metrics that allows the SQL query optimizer to optimize your SQL correctly. And let me just start off with an example. Uh, I Yesterday, I loaded a new database, uh, and it's got a bunch of tables in there. One of the tables is called customer. If I do a run, didn't mean to do that. I meant to do run, uh, choose Uh, you can see that it has a uh, million five hundred customers in it. But if I look at sys tables, it says right here there's zero rows in that table. And so the query optimizer is going to think uh, there's zero rows. When you do a query, there's not time to do a select count on every table in the query. So it looks at sys tables to see how many rows are in that table. And it's going to say, oh, there are no rows in that table. I can do a sequential scan. And with uh, 1.5 million rows, that's going to be a long sequential scan. So that's why update stats, I think, is one of the most important tasks a DBA can do. Now, one of the huge improvements in uh, version 11, 12, and 14 is the automated update stats that's built in the server. But you still need to monitor it. You still need to manage it and uh, make sure it's working for you. So what does update stats do? The first thing it does is it updates that uh, field I showed you right here in rows in the system tables. Uh, and it goes out and collects information that the query optimizer needs for deciding which tables to do first and which indexes to use. It also collects data distributions. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that, but that's a breakdown of how your data is stored in the database. And it also, uh, last but not least uh, important, re-optimizes stored procedures. If I had a stored procedure that uses that customer database and I created it, it would be compiled thinking there are no rows in, in that table. And over time, as your tables grow, you need to recompile and re-optimize your stored procedures to keep them up to date. Now, there are three levels of update stats. There's low, medium, and high. Low is very quick, and it basically gets a row count for every table in the database. Medium, uh, in addition to getting the row count, will get a sampling of data. And that's the key word there. It doesn't get every row. It gets a sampling uh, of 
usually less than 3,000 rows. Um, and then high scans every row and it will sort every column you have in the list to do high on. So if you have five columns in the list to do high on, it's going to do five sorts. All that gives your query optimizer, your SQL optimizer, really good information uh, on how to run queries. If you saw my webcast last month, uh, it was on uh, set explain and using set explain to see uh, what the query optimizer is doing. And so go back and, and review that uh, to find out more about how it works. Here's the syntax, but let's just dive in. Uh, update stats low is the default. Uh, if you just say update stats, uh, it's fast, but it gathers the least amount of data. And it updates uh, three tables. It does not get any distributions. And uh, sys tables, it updates it with the number of rows uh, and the number of pages that are stored. Uh, in sys columns, it takes a look and, and says what the second largest and second smallest value in sys columns is. In sys indexes, it determines how unique an index is. Uh, a unique index is better and will be faster to use. Uh, than an index that has a lot of duplicates. And then it also determines how clustered an index uh, value is. So this is what update stats low is. It's very fast, very efficient, and uh, the basic thing that you need to make sure gets done on your server. Medium does a sampling of rows. And with the default, it will sample 2,963 rows. What it will do is it'll take the data, the columns, you tell it to sample, and create distribution bins uh, for that data. By default, it creates 50 bins. And uh, it will divide that data into distribution bins so that when you do a query, you basically, it we'll get an idea of this data I'm looking for is in this distribution of data. And that helps the optimizer decide whether to use an index or not. Now, because medium only does a sample, uh, it may miss rows. Now, if you have a small table, it's less than uh, 3,000 rows, medium actually is going to read every row. Uh, but if you have a large table with uh, a million rows, medium is only going to read uh, 2,963 records. So you'll miss a lot of data with a medium. But medium is, is very fast because it does the sampling only. The syntax is update statistics medium for table, table name, give it columns. And then the key thing is to add the word distributions only. And what you want to do is you want to do low first, and then when you do medium and high, say distributions only so it doesn't redo the low. Otherwise, you're going to keep redoing uh, the low over and over again. Not that that hurts anything. It does take a few seconds uh, longer. Also, doing the low first will help the medium and high because now it knows how many rows are out there that it should go uh, do the medium or high on. So do low first, then medium or high. Now there's a whole bunch of stuff on resolution and, uh, you know, how, how, and you can fine tune all this. I find just going with the default uh, for medium, which will end up sampling about 2,000 rows works fine. I now reads every row and it takes uh, all the rows and sorts it into 200 bins. Medium only does 50, high does 200 bins. And it sorts all of the columns. So if you tell it to do high on table customer and you list five columns, it's going to do five sorts. If you list two columns, it's only going to do two sorts, and that will be much faster 
than listing five columns. So it's very important when you do high to carefully pick the columns you want to do high on. If you say high on the whole table, it has to read the whole table and then sort every column. If there are 50 columns in that table, it's going to do 50 sorts. So that's what takes time in doing update stats is the sort of very large tables and all those columns in the list. Now, when you do medium or high, they create rows and sys distributions, which has the distributions of, of the data. And it's a good practice to uh, say distributions only again with high. So you don't redo the low, you just want the distributions. And it's a real good practice to do update stats low before you do medium or high. And the syntax again is update stats, high, for table, table name. And here it's very important to list columns. You can list uh, column one, column two, uh, and you can have a comma separated list. If you don't, it will sort every column in that table, which could be a lot of sorts that are going to go on. So it's very important to pick and limit uh, high to just the key columns that you really need update stats on. And here's an example script I have uh, where I'm going to do update stats low for uh, three tables. And then I do update stats medium uh, for the same three tables. And I say distributions only. Uh, this is a small database, so it's going to be fairly quick. And then I say update stats high for state table. I'm just doing it on one column. For the zip table, I'm doing it on zip, zip and state. And then for the benchmark table, I'm doing it on ID, zip, and state. These are the three key columns in that table. Just as a quick example, uh, let me exit out of here and uh, choose uh, my update stats script. And I'm going to run it. And uh, it's run. And I've just updated the stats. This is a, a small uh, database, only has about uh, 20, I think 200,000 rows maybe in, in it. Um, and so we're, we're good to go. So let's talk about data distributions. Data distributions are buckets for the type of data in a column. And my favorite simple example is I once had, did a system that had a status column that had four values. Uh, there was active, and 49% of the data was active. There were inactive, uh, and 49% of the data was also inactive. And there was pending, and only 1% of the data was pending. And then there was an error status, and only 1% of the data was had an error status. And the fastest way to retrieve this data uh, because you're going after 49% was to do a sequential scan. The fastest way to get pending or error was to use an index. The only way the optimizer knew that and could select whether to use a scan or an index was because of data distributions. So that's the whole purpose of data distributions is to give the optimizer enough information so it can decide should I use this index or not? Are you looking for a huge set of the data? Or are you looking for one or two records? And the only way it knows that is if it has valid distributions. So it basically, the data distributions help the optimizer pick columns and indexes uh, to use in building a query plan. You don't need distributions for every column in a table. In fact, I sometimes think giving the optimizer too, inf too much information will slow it down. And so I think it's very important to select key columns, not every column. One column that is very important is the first 
column in an index. Uh, if you only have one column in an index, that's important. If you have four or five columns in an index, the first column is very important. Uh, the second thing is key columns used in joins and any key columns used in filters. But again, if there's not an index there, data distributions aren't really going to help uh, because where data distributions help is in telling the optimizer, should I use an index or not when I'm querying this column? It knows there's an index there. The question is not if there's an index there. The question is, is the index going to be faster to satisfy my where clause than not using the index? And I'm going to dive right into an example uh, in just a minute on what data distributions look like. The process, though, for collecting distributions is it has to do a scan. If it's medium, it's going to read about 2,900 rows. If it's high, it's going to read all the rows. And it does that scan with a dirty read. So it's OK if people are using the data while it's doing update stats. Uh, that's not going to lock people out. And people doing queries or updates or inserts are not going to lock update stats out. Uh, so it's going to do a quick scan uh, of the columns. And then it's going to sort each column and put the columns into these bins. And when it's ready to put the columns into the bins, it does a very short, quick transaction where it deletes the old columns and inserts new records uh, into the distributions table and then commits that. Uh, and then it's done. And that, that should be a very quick microscopic uh, transaction. And that's the only time that it locks anything is when it does this transaction. Most of the time, the SQL optimizer knows that if this is locked, to wait uh, for other users. Uh, and, and they won't get slowed down. Once in a while, if you happen to be doing a query and you, you the query optimizer tries to read sys distributions when you're doing this little quick update, you might get a lock error. Uh, in current versions, you rarely see that. Now, to see the distributions, you can use DB schema with the minus HD option. Uh, DB schema minus D stores demo minus HD orders will show you the distributions for the orders table. Let me show you some examples. This is on a table uh, uh, in the zip database called zip. And the field is called zip. It says it did high. And it tells me the, uh, there are 200 bins here, so I'm only showing the first 15 bins on the screen. Uh, it tells me that there are 209 rows in each bin, and there are 209 unique rows. So now the optimizer knows that every row is unique. And it tells me that the starting value is 401. The ending value for this first bin is 102. 7, 4. This is an integer column, even though it's a zip code, so the leading zeros got dropped. And so on. This gives you, it gives the optimizer the range of values in the bin. And that, that's all you need, is the range of values in a bin. Here's a second table, uh, uh, same table, a second field called city. And we did on that. And so there are 50 bins. Again, you're only seeing the first 15. Because there are only 50 bins, it, each bin has uh, 1,046 rows. And it's telling me in this first bin, uh, only 121 of, of the rows are unique. In the second bin, 96 are unique. And on down the list. So it's, it, and it's also telling me this is the first value and then the highest value in that bin. And then uh, Baltimore is the highest value in the next bin. Birmingham is the highest value in the next bin. So it's giving you the ranges of values in each bin. 
Now, one thing about uh, distributions is you have data overflows. And that's when one value exceeds 25% of a bin, it gets placed in the overflow area. Here I've got an overflow area, uh, and I believe it's for this uh, city. Uh, so there's one city, uh, New York, which uh, has 537 values in the database. And that gets placed in the overall because that is greater than 25% of 1,046. I have another table here, which I did high on, called zip and state. And this is interesting. I, I only, even though I did high, I only have two bins because everything is in the overflow. And uh, the first bin only has 37 rows. Four of them are unique and it ends with uh, Wyoming. And then the overflow here, AK, there are uh, 264 uh, rows that have AK. Uh, Alabama, 822 rows that have Alabama. So the overflow area identifies fields, columns, data values that have a lot of records with that data value. Uh, if it has less than 25% of a bin, it just gets put in the bin. If it has more than 25% of a bin, it will get identified in the overflow value. And that tells the optimizer, hmm, there are a lot of values with this value in this column. So that's distributions. And, and the important thing is distributions tell an optimizer you can give it a where clause and you can say where date equals between these two dates. And the optimizer can go to the distributions and say, okay, do I have an index and how unique is that index? And should I use the index or should I just do a scan on the whole table? Yeah. There's another uh, bit of syntax to update stats that I want to talk about. That's drop distributions. Uh, particularly after an upgrade, uh, you want to drop the old distributions. Uh, also, whatever things get really stale, you may want to drop the distributions. Now, when you do update statistics, medium or high, it automatically drops the old distributions and replaces them with new. Uh, but there are specific times when you'll want to drop distributions to get rid of them. Uh, maybe you decide you don't need to do update stats high for this column anymore. Uh, and this, or when you're doing an upgrade. And I'll come to upgrades again in a little bit. Uh, but here you just say update stats low for table, table name, give it the columns and tell it to drop distributions. It'll do update stats low. Then it will go drop all the medium and high distributions for those columns. Now, stored procedures. Uh, update stats is very important for stored procedures. I've seen this a lot of times. You build a database, uh, you compile all your stored procedure, database is empty, so they get all optimized as if the database was empty, which means they're only going to do sequential scans. And this is very important. If the uh, number of rows in the table is zero, the fastest way to read that table is with a sequential scan, not with an index. So that's why oftentimes uh, you build a new database or you do a migration to a new server uh, until you've done update statistics and until you've done update statistics for your stored procedures with data loaded, uh, everything's going to be off. You can also do update statistics for function and for routine. Uh, and if you just say update statistics for function, procedure, routine, that will get all of them. Uh, if you want to name specific ones, you need to name specific ones uh, here to do it. Basically, when you create a stored procedure, uh, it gets compiled. And then the query plan gets built into it and saved at that point. Uh, and until you update stats on it, it's not going to change. Now, very important, though, when you do update stats for stored procedures, not to set PDQ priority. 
because that will be compiled with the stored procedure. Uh, I once uh, had a client that said, every time we, we run the stored procedure, it locks the whole database. And we went and debugged it, and somebody had done updates, set PDQ priority to 100, and then un update statistics for that stored procedure, which meant when that stored procedure ran, it asked for 100% of the resources and locked everybody out. You want to avoid that. And uh, it's very important when you do update uh, statistics for stored procedures to set PDQ priority to zero. So what are the recommendations uh, for running update st statistics? The first one, and I think the most important one, is you want to do low for a database and every table in a database on a regular uh, basis. And the second one then is to do medium on selected tables. Uh, again, this is depending on how much time you have uh, or s selected columns. Uh, the key is to balance how long does it take to do update stats versus how much does it help the query optimizer? If it doesn't help the query optimizer, why do it? Uh, why spend too much time doing it? And uh, so it's, it's much better to do medium and high where you select the key columns. And what you want to do, particularly with high, is uh, you want to select any column that is the first in an index, uh, any key column used in a join, and any key, key column used in an SQL where clause. Now, I'll talk about this later on. Arts do stats, and the AUS know and can discover what the key column is in an index. You, as a DBA, are the only one that knows what columns are used in joins, and you are the only one that knows what columns are used as filters. So this is why it's very important as a DBA to plan your update stats. Uh, and Formix can figure this one out. Uh, you know which one uh, are, are in these parameters. And it's very important to remember the goal is not to overdo it, but to balance time to run update stats versus improving query performance. Now, if you want to make update stats run faster, you can use store a PDQ priority. That will definitely make it run faster. Uh, and this is a whole separate discussion using PDQ priority that I'll save for another webcast in the future. But you don't want to do that for stored procedures, however. You just want to do it for your tables and columns. Now, after an upgrade, this is really important to do update stats. Uh, I did a, a upgrade. Uh, well, I've done this several times, but one I did with a customer. We did it over the weekend. Uh, they were using uh, the automatic update stats, and performance was terrible for the first week. And that's because we did not run updates. And it was using uh, the old stats, which were incorrect for the current version of the server. And uh, AUS had not yet run, because AUS runs on Saturday and Sunday. And this, we did the upgrade, finished it Monday. So AUS wasn't going to run until Saturday. Now, it was interesting. At the end of the week, that Saturday AUS ran, the next week performance was great. Uh, so it's very important though to, when you do an upgrade, uh, drop the old distributions and then run update stats to uh, the new distributions. One thing update stats will sometimes do if necessary, and I should say sometimes, not always. If it's necessary to convert indexes to an upgraded format for the database server, update stats will do it. So the first time you run update stats after an upgrade, it may take longer because of that. Uh, it may rebuild the indexes. And uh, this, this is extremely uh, when you migrate uh, to a new database server or you upgrade uh, the version of Informix is the first thing after you finish the upgrade, run update stats on that new server.
Now, I have a couple of example uh, scripts I'm going to show you on uh, how to monitor update stats. And uh, I'm going to back out here and come over here and uh, go into query language and let's select. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, and some of these are going to look at AUS and some of the tables in the sysadmin database. So I am connecting to the sysadmin database. The first query is, let's take a look at a table in the sysadmin database called Mon Table Profile. And this is where AUS gets counts of how things have changed. So I'm going to do a query for the number of tables in that. This should be the number of tables in my all databases in my server. If it's not, then uh, you're missing some tables. Then I'm going to say, look at the number of uh, usage count. And this is a count of how many records have changed in those tables. And uh, this is what the US uses to tell whether the table has changed or not. Um, I'm also going to look at open count. Open just tells me how many times the table was used. Uh, this tells me how many times it was inserted, updated, or deleted. So let's run this and uh, let's see what happens here. So I've got 3,000 uh, OE3 tables. Uh, 296 tables have had counts where things have changed and 83 t tables have had open statements uh, that have changed. And you can sort of look at the, at the raw data here. It's not that interesting. Now, if you want to see uh, from AUS, uh, there's a command called AUS command which has uh, all the update stats commands that are going to run. And my first query here is going to be uh, a count by state. Uh, and the state could be pending, done, in progress, or error. There are four states. Uh, and the second one is I'm just going to do a, a read from this table. So let's run it. So it tells me I only have that many statements, 1,690 that are pending. Uh, and it tells me, this is the first statement there. And you can sort of see these are the update stats commands waiting to be run by AUS. Now, this is one of my favorite uh, queries. Let's say you want to run the update stats command yourself. This will unload from AUS what the update stats commands are. So the first thing is I'm going to do is I'm going to run a select statement from AUS, where, uh, and I'm going to create a new SQL script called current low update stats. And it's going to get all the update stats uh, that need to be run low. And then I'm going to, the second script here is going to get the medium stats and the high stats. So I can run that and it's done all kinds of loads. And now I will have three scripts. Let's just take a look at the current low and I can come here and run it. And I've just run, this is the same things that AUS would run on Saturday. I'm running right now. And I can do mediums and high for that. Uh, number four looks at the task scheduler. There are two tasks in uh, AUS, one called the evaluator and one called the update stats refresher. The evaluator goes out and reads the monitoring table to see what needs to be done. The refresher goes out and actually refreshes the data. So let's take a look at these two tasks. 
So this tells me the evaluator uh, is going to run. Uh, next time it will run is on the 22nd. And uh, this tells me how long it took to run the last time it ran. Uh, and it's set to run every day. And uh, the next one is the actual update stats refresh. This, this tells me, okay, here's what's actually going to do the update stats. So the evaluator says what needs to be done and puts it into AUS command, the, uh, the update stats tables in the pending status. And then this will tell me what needs uh, to be done. And this is going to be run next on the 23rd, which is Saturday. Now, there is a table, go back to modify uh, just so you can see it, called AUS Command Info. It's not well documented. Uh, what I like about it is it does tell you by database uh, when AUS was last run and how many tables were affected. So it sort of gives you an idea uh, now, this is what the evaluator has done and uh, whether it can go out and, and, and uh, do it by database. I have another script here called make update stats low that um, will generate, and let's go pick a new, let's connect to another database. Let's connect to my benchmark uh, uh, three database language run so it created a low for every table in that database and I can come pick that and run it and it's going to run now low for every table in that database Now, the two most important scripts for monitoring, AUS last run tells you when AUS was last run by database, by table, and it says it did a low, it did a high, it did a low, it did a high. Here's the date when it was last run. And uh, it says the 24th because cause I forced it to run earlier uh, today. And uh, we'll go through and tell you when it was last run. Now, another script I really like is this update stats info, which goes out and says for the current database, when was update stats last run? And it's telling me, okay, for the current database, for the customer table, medium was done on the 19th, uh, for the C city, I'm uh, sorry, for the customer table, C city, Medium was done also on the 19th. This is telling me when update stats. So this is not AUS. This is any time you do update stats, this is telling you when it's done. And that's the key difference between these two scripts. Uh, seven AUS last run says when did AUS last run. Eight update stats info tells you when did update stats last run. So here are the scripts. I've got the code uh, here in the slides. That's why there are going to be a lot of slides here. So hopefully you can cut and paste them and, and get them out. Now, before I talk about AUS, I want to talk about Art's do. Uh, Art has done this for years, and I'm always impressed with how many people use it. And if you're using it, make sure you're using the latest version. Go to his website and get the latest version. He does regular updates, and I, I am astonished sometimes. I'll go out to a site, and they're running a 20-year-old version of Arts Do Stats. Uh, the latest version works with AUS. Uh, it has a number of improvements and advantages, um, and uh, a lot of options. The key option, a couple key things. It does require the SDK and live path to be set. So if you're on version 
2018, you have to uh, install the SDK. In version 12, the SDK was usually installed with the server. In version 14, it no longer is. So you have to install it separately. And you have to set LD Live Path. It also requires a TCP communications uh, to, to connect uh, to the server. So I'm just going to go over here and I have another window. Uh, so I, I'm just going to show you, I have a special environment file uh, which sets up my server to the TCP version and uh, I have um, it going to uh, the uh, live path. Now, this is interesting. The SDK is installed in version 12. I am actually doing this against a version. No, it's not. That's because it's it's uh, not seeing the database. Uh, so if I do do stats, this will give me my option. If I do do stats minus D, and uh, I'm going to pick a database, and let's go to my other window and uh, let these stats run. Let's pick the, I want to make a point of this, the database select, the no log database. I'm going to run it. You see update stats low was run in this, but that's about it. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell uh, it using do stats to run that on the bench mark no log. And it goes off and does it. Now if I restart that query, I've got detailed update stats from running arts do stat. Really like this and uh, really, really appreciate it. Arts recommendation is you do a, a minus D database name, minus Q, and you can set a PDQ uh, level, minus E, and then local display will display it uh, to your terminal. I, I just did it with the minus D option in database. So let's talk about AUS now. Uh, AUS is automated update stats, and it's a set of tasks that are built into Informix. And the idea is to automate update stats. And it's done a really good job of doing that over the years. When it first came out, I was a little bit hesitant to use it. Uh, now now I, I, I use it on a regular basis. There are a couple of lim limitations though, and I want to mention them. What it does is daily, it runs an evaluator script. And the evaluator goes out and looks at your tables in the database and says, how much data has changed? And then weekly on Saturday and Sunday, it runs the update stats command for the tables that have changed. So if a table hasn't changed a lot, and there's a percentage you can tell it, uh, it won't run update stats. It only uh, runs update stats on things that have changed a lot. AUS will only work with log databases. This is a key point. If you have unlogged databases, AUS will not work. And that's because the sysadmin database is logged and it can only connect to other log databases. So if you have an unlogged database, arts do stats of thing to use. And there's a web page uh, on IBM's support site for AUS that you can go look at which, which describes this uh, issue. Uh, but that may be if you have uh, 12 or 14 and you're saying why is AUS not working? It may be if your database is unlogged it's not going to run. It can't. Uh, it can't do anything. Sysadmin database cannot work on unlogged databases. So the evaluator task, there are two tasks, remember. The evaluator task runs every day and it looks at the table on table profile to identify how many rows have changed. I showed you that script earlier uh, that has the... And then based on a policy you set, and the default is 10%, uh, if 10% of the data has changed, then it will 
insert a update stats command into the AUS command table to run. That's what the evaluator does. It runs every night, says how much data has changed, do I need to run update stats, and if the answer is yes, it adds a one line for that table into the AUS command table. Now, it does that one line based on what has done before, and if there is an index, it will do it on the first column in that index. So, by default, if you've run a, uh, update stats manually before, AUS will keep doing it, and it will also do it on the first column in an index. Um, and and that's, that's all. It will do low on everything. Uh, that's in that table. Then once a week on Saturday and Sunday, and the default is 1 a.m. to 5 a.m., the update stats refresh task will run. And uh, it reads uh, the AUS command table and then updates it. Pending means uh, it's waiting to run. I means it's in progress. E means it's an error. And C means it completed with no errors. Now, one issue I've seen is this may not be enough time, particularly after you've done a big upgrade or, or some major change like that. I was working with a client where every week they would get further behind in doing update stats uh, after an upgrade. And it started out with 1,000 tables, and then it grew to 1,500, 2,000, 3,000 tables. Uh, Sometimes you need to temporarily change this or manually run update stats uh, directly to get caught up. And then you can go back to the schedule. But the default schedule is Saturday to Sunday between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. Now, if you have a big batch job running then, you may want to also change this to a different time. You can, and I'm going to show you how to change it to a different time in a few minutes. So in AUS, the key tables are a MON table profile, which tracks the inserts, updates, and deletes, and it gets it from a sysmaster table. AUS commands, which has the update stats commands, the PH task, which is the task to run, and then AUS command complete has the completed commands, AUS command list. These are two views of this table. Uh, they're, they're just views of the table. One shows you completed, and one shows you the commands pending, ready to run. And then AUS command info gives you a bit of info by database. Now, there are rules in a table called pH threshold. And these rules are important. Uh, the first rule is called AUS age, and the default is 30 days. And that is after how many days to run update stats regardless of how much data has changed. So let's say only 1% has changed every week. After 30 days, it's going to run update stats regardless because it's not hit the default of 10%. Uh, AUS auto rule it basically turns on auto or, or turns it off. Uh, if you have it enabled, it will update stats low on all tables. It will update stats on the leading index high. It will update uh, non-leading keys uh, medium, and it will it will do medium and high with these defaults. If an update stats command was run manually, AUS will pick that up and run it also. So that's what one does. Zero says don't do the auto, and basically that turns off AUS. PDQ priority is what PDQ priority should I use with AUS? And the default is 10. Uh, small table size, the default is 100 rows. And AUS sort of says big tables and small tables, and it treats them slightly different. A small table is less than 100 rows. A big table is more than 100 rows. I would typically change this to 1,000. Uh, I, I think... Uh, Anything up 1,000 uh, is really a small table. Now, you can prioritize the databases. In pH threshold, you can insert a record 
saying uh, you give it an ID of zero. You say AUS database high, that's the task name, uh, or the evaluator. You give it the database name, and you give it a string, and you tell it to rank. The, this basically tells it to rank this database as high. Otherwise, it's going to default to all databases at Mesium. So let's say you have five databases, and one of them is your important production database. You could do this to make sure that that database gets done first before the other four databases. You can also do this through the Informix HQ server that I'll show you in a minute. If you want to change the schedule, you can issue an update uh, PHP task. And uh, it's very sensitive to this. This name is case sensitive. You've got to put it exactly like that. So here I'm setting the stop time to 8 a.m. The default is 5 a.m. I've just added uh, a few more hours to the stop time. Or in this second example, if I want to have it update, uh, run update stats every day, I can set every day to true. And it's going to run it uh, every day now at whatever time it is set to there. Uh, so you can change the schedule. You can change how often it runs with a couple of simple update commands in the sysadmin database. Now, a couple of onconfig parameters that are really important. Auto stat mode. One enables it or two disables it. And stat change, this is the 10% that I've been talking about. The default here is only trigger a change when the stats are, have changed by over 10%. Now remember, this other default here says do it 30 days regardless of over 10%. So every 30 days, everything that's uh, low, medium, high, uh, the default, and then within, during the month, it will only happen if it changes by 10%. And UTS low uh, enables or disables the sampling uh, for medium operation. That's a good idea to keep that at the default. Another keyword you can add to update stats, and one is force. Update stats force says, do it regardlessly, even if uh, everything looks okay. Force update stats to run. Auto says, yeah, run update stats if I've exceeded this threshold. Uh, so you can have an update stats script with the keyword auto at the end of it. And, uh, and you need it at the end of every line. And it will only update stats if you have the stat change uh, value exceeded. Now, the next set of slides are going to be talking about Informix HQ and looking at AUS uh, with Informix HQ. And I'm going to bring up my server here. Uh, so I have a server. Let's make sure I'm still connected. Yep. And uh, Informix HQ has got to be one of the best things that uh, they've come out with recently. If you go here to server administration, and the first thing is auto update stats. This is where you control update stats. And the first is a overview and it tells me, okay, uh, here are how many tables are, need their stats refreshed. And here's the last time stats were run. Uh, now remember, this is based on running last night when it did the evaluator. So I've run update stats uh, today. Well, I, I did the evaluator today too. So it, it sees uh, what, what is, needs to be done. The configuration is where I can change, I can see the schedule and change the schedule here for the evaluator and the refresh. And I can set the rules. I can change the 30-day uh, rule. I can change the 10% rule. I can say, follow the AUS rules. Uh, the small table rule, I can set PDQ priority. Number of threads, this is another key one. If you get behind in doing, or you see that AUS is getting behind, uh, adding the number of, increasing the number of threads will start 
two or three or more additional threads. And that's a good temporary uh, reason to, uh, to do that. And then once you get caught, caught up, go back to, to one thread. Think of that as how many process, it's informix threads are gonna run running update stats. The default is one uh, with a PDQ priority of 10. And if you say five here, and they're all running with a PDQ priority, priority of 10, that means you're going to be using 50% of the PDQ priority on your server. Alerts, this tells you all the alerts that a US evaluator has found. And uh, the last alert says, whoops, it found uh, 74 tables in this database that need stats updated. And commands will show me my, my US commands. Under scheduler, uh, if I sort scheduler by uh, names, you'll see the AUS uh, update stats uh, evaluation and the stats refresh. And I'll just show you the evaluation. I can come in here and if I edit this, now I can change anything I want to here. I'm not going to edit it. I'm going to cancel out. So Informix HQ is really good uh, if you have, uh, the best thing to do is get 14, get Informix HQ. You can run it against 12 databases. So quick summary here, and then I'll take a look at uh, questions. Uh, really important uh, to run update stats because uh, this is a key factor in the performance of your server. Without update stats, the SQL optimizer will pick an incorrect uh, execution plan. And this is one of the most effective things for improving the performance of your server. And you, you need a DBA, this is I think after backups and at high availability, Probably the next most important thing is performance. And update stats is one of the most important things uh, you can do as a DBA. Now, let's take a look at questions. And let me uh, get the chat up here so I can see it. Uh, um, so I'm just going to, if you have a question, put it in the chat, please. Uh, I see one from Mike. Uh, is there any reason to drop distributions for low? And the only way you drop distributions is is to run low and that gets rid of them and the only reason to do that is after an upgrade so raj a good question uh, and i hope i answered that i had two scripts here um aus last run which wrong tape table let me uh like the sysadmin database, which tells me when AUS last ran. And uh, the second script, update stats info, will tell me when it was run uh, for your database. And so the scripts are here in the slides. If I go back, hopefully you can cut and paste. Uh, this is the one you want to do. This run this by database table, and uh, I'll tell you that. Is there an on stat command? There's not one that I know of, um, and uh, that's why this what I have right up here. This SQL George is I think the best way to tell if uh, update stats have been run recently on your tables. And this will do it by by table uh, and by column in that data, database table. Good questions, you all. Any more questions? Yes. Low, uh, good question, Raj. Uh, sister distributions is updated for uh, medium or high. Low is updated by in sys tables. So if you do a, a I'm just going to do a quick select. I can type it. Like star from this tables, 
UTS low stats is when low was last done for this table. Uh, good question. How often do we need to run update stats high uh, on a busy system? If the data is not changing, uh, you, you don't need to run it. Uh, you know, a million row table, 10% of the data, uh, and you, you could, that's a lot of data that has to change. So once a month is probably, uh, and that's the default, is once a month. Uh, I, I've seen systems where uh, you may not run it even once a month, uh, as long as the data doesn't change uh, too much. Uh, but if the data is changing 50%, then yeah, you need to run it more often. And what you want to do is try and partition your data. And remember, uh, on a partition table, update stats medium and high is done by partition. So on a partition table, uh, high only needs to be done on the partition that's changing. Uh, so it doesn't redo it on the other partitions that don't change. Now, I don't understand the question about, uh, I just got AUS can't run even in uh, 1410. I'm running 1410 here, and AUS is running just fine. So please clarify a little bit on the question. Uh, yes, you, you can specify a partition, uh, just like you specify a table name. Oh, good question. Yeah, in a non-logging database, AUS won't run, uh, even in 1410. Uh, that, that, and the, the limitation there is, is sysadmin is a logged database. It cannot connect to and do commands on a non-logged database. That's a very good question, yes. Okay, any other questions? Let me uh, go over just a couple of last minute things. and I'll, I'll look and see if there are any more questions. First thing, if you're in the Washington area, D DC area, we have a user group meeting coming up December 3rd. And guess who's going to be there? Jonathan Leffler. Uh, I'm really excited about this. Uh, Jonathan uh, will be our guest speaker. Uh, to me, this is worth coming to DC for. Uh, if you're not here, <laughs> I, would, I, would, uh, I would come up for this meeting and uh, highly recommend it. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Perl and uh, DB uh, the Informix, the Informix module for Perl. And we're going to talk about encryption and Informix. And so it should be a very ex exciting meeting. Uh, highly recommend it. Next year, we're going to do something new. Uh, we're, we, we have had a number of requests for, I, I want free training. And yeah, I have great training classes, uh, but we've decided to try an experiment where we will have a webcast series. Uh, I'm calling them the free Informix tutorials. They're not a full training class, uh, but a series of tutorials for beginners with Informix. And I'll start in January getting started with Informix, uh, with the goal being by the end of this webcast, I'll show you step by step how to get a basic Conformix server up and running. And uh, then the next one in February will be on the onconfig file and how to get a more uh, extensive Informix server up and running. Then we'll do one on disk space, one on logs, one on backups, one on users, one on tables, and then one on some basic monitoring information. We're also planning uh, on doing advanced uh, webcasts next year. Uh, we may do two a month next year. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but uh, these are the ones we are, are committed to right now, and there, there may be more. Stay, uh, keep track of our, 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 our webpage for the next webcast. Uh, training, uh, we have a class uh, May for uh, new Informix DBAs. Uh, and then in July, uh, we have the advanced uh, class. Uh, we also may have a class in January. I've got three people that have expressed interest in an early class 
Uh, if anybody's interested in one in January, let me know, and I'll add you to the list. They may make it a private class. If if you if you have a company, I, I've I, I've done a lot of private training. Uh, if you have four people, it's worth doing a private class. It's cheaper to just to do a private class, where I'll I'll train a uh, if if you pay for the travel expense, I'll even come on site and do it. Um, last week I had a blast. I taught a Informix 4GL class. Uh, it's been a while since I've done that, but it was it was a a support organization. They wanted to make sure all their developers, uh, they were all, not all of them, but um, about half of them were new developers uh, who had never used 4GL before. They wanted to make sure they knew how to support their 4GL. A lot of fun. We do a lot of customized training. And uh, if if uh, you do come to our class, uh, this is our class. Uh, we, we can have eight students. Uh, that's the physical limit of our class side because we only have eight servers. Each student gets their own service server, but you can also attend online. I like it better when you come here because uh, I like to see smiling faces, but you can do classes online. And I've done classes where the students are in India or in Singapore or in Australia. Yeah, I want to point out uh, we have a new website coming soon, and uh, this is a teaser uh for uh what's coming up and uh if you're interested in testing it out drop me an email uh we're looking for uh beta testers i would love to get feedback the idea is we're going to launch this uh end of december and uh it, it should be ready to go then and then uh the last thing is uh we do a lot of stuff we do monitoring we do training we do uh support and we do consulting let me just see if there are any more questions in the chat. Uh, actually, the latest version of 4GL is 7.5.1, uh, and they just released a new version. And I was really excited about this. This was a couple of months ago. Uh, the new version is to take advantage of the newer compilers. So it was mainly bug fixes and then changes to take advantage of the 64-bit compilers. So 4GL is not gone. Uh, it's it's uh, still being used. Uh, I'm always amazed when I go around uh, to our clients how many uh, still use 4GL. And then Vince, good question. Our previous webcasts uh, are all online. And uh, on our new site, uh, if you come here under Tech Info, see if this works. I'm always reluctant on, on uh, how this is going to work on the new site. This, this is the webcast I did last month. And then you can see all the old webcasts here. Uh, so they're all available online. Uh, oh, one other thing, I forgot to put a slide in here. This was a lot of fun. Art Kegel and I did a podcast uh, with, with uh, Al Martin on making data simple. If you go out there, you, you just do a, a query for uh, making data simple. Uh, you should be able to find the podcast that Art Cagle and I did with, with Al Martin. A lot of fun. So cool. Well, this has been a, a fun uh, group. I really appreciate everybody uh, hanging in there. I know I'm way over time. Thank you very much.